Welcome to Buckets. This is Action Network's basketball betting podcast. I'm Maria Marino, back with Action Network writer Jim Turvey. Jim, it's September 1st. Like, what? <laughs> what <laughs> that happened? Um, and it's also our last Friday pod of the season. Now that we're into September, we're going to go back to once a week here on uh, buckets for WNBA, and we're going to be back on Tuesday. But uh, how, how are you feeling about this whole September thing? <laughs> yeah, the season has flown right by. Um, it's been it's been a great season. Uh, it's been, been a fun summer in general. I hope everyone's had uh, enjoyed the weather. I feel like the weather was terrible the first half of the summer. So hopefully, you know, people had plenty of basketball to watch for that stretch. But it's been pretty nice lately, at least uh, in the in the Northeast here. So no no complaints on that front. Yeah, um, I'm with you there. And look, hopefully people have been uh, having a profitable summer, helped in part by this pod and picks from people like yourself, occasionally me, but mostly <laughs> my guests like yourself. Uh, so let's get into uh, the three games slate, which is tonight on ION. So once again, Friday, September 1st, uh, we know the playoff chase is in full effect. Uh, we know the one, two, and three seed are pretty much locked in. Four and beyond, uh, not so much. So we'll start with the uh, the fourth seeded team at the moment, which is the Dallas Wings, and they are visiting the Indiana Fever at seven Eastern. Wings are favored by five and a half. Now Dallas beat Phoenix, but they dropped two to Minnesota before that. Fever. What is going on with them? They won three in a row now. Like at first I was, you know, excited about them this season and they kind of like dipped and now all of a sudden they're like playing really well again. But, um, but there's some injuries to consider for this one. Yeah, uh, you, you nailed it there at the very end, the, the two the two big injuries. Now, I'll say the Fever are technically still alive for a playoff spot. It would take basically borderline miraculous stuff to happen. It's probably about a point. 0.01% chance, but they are technically still alive. Um, and they've kind of been playing like it. Like you said, they've, they've got a couple of recent wins. This is just, you know, all season, this season, and last season even, we had the fourth quarter fever. They're, it, even though they have not been a good team in a while, they have been a very pesky, fun-to-root-for underdog. They're like kind of the epitome of that young, scrappy team. Um, but I'll tell you why, um, you know, I'm maybe not looking to their to their side on Friday. Um, and you nailed it earlier. It's the the injury. So for the wings, there's no Natasha Howard. That, that's important. But I and especially with their depth, it's you know they don't have the deepest team around. But I'm not as worried about that as I am for the Fever, who have Aaliyah Boston as questionable. So is this line sitting about five and a half. If Aaliyah Boston doesn't play, um, I would play the wings up to about eight and a half um, on the road here. Aaliyah Boston. It's her rookie season, but she's been absolutely outstanding. Um, she's shown offensively and defensively she can kind of carry the load. She's been one of the most efficient offensive players in the league, not even just among rookies. Some of the, like, you know, uh, you know, some of the fancy pants stats out there already think she's one of the like five to 10 best players in the league. So her, her, her missing from this team would be a, a huge, huge miss. Um, the, their, the team as a whole, so, you know, we, we talk about on off and, and kind of the impact that players have sometimes. So with her on the court this season, the Fever, you know, just about a, a little bit below average team. They're about minus 2.4 net rating with her on the court. With her off that court, that plummets. They're minus 14.1. That's by, It would be by far worse than any team um, this season and probably in seasons past as well. Um, so she's kind of the reason they've gone from that worst team in the league to like a, a pretty respectable, you know, not quite eliminated from the playoffs fever team. So she's out. Um, I'm be looking at the wing side. If she plays, um, I, I, at this number, I probably wouldn't grab it. But if it does kind of creep towards the wings and there's actually a little bit of room for the, the fever on that, um, she's, she's just such a key swing player on this that um, yeah. would definitely want to keep an eye on as the injury reports come out throughout the day. Yeah, so here's the thing. I I was kind of leaning Dallas even before I was considering whether or not um, Aaliyah Boston would play. And the reason is it, it, it's almost like I feel like the Fever are due to take a, a little bit of a step back. Um, all respect, like I said, they've won three in a row. 
They've been very scrappy wins. Uh, they've all been within 10 points. Um, the last game was actually against the Dream, and that's when uh, Aaliyah Boston um, got hurt. And so she didn't play, like, pretty much the whole second half, and uh, they, they found a way to to stay in it and to actually pull out a, a pretty miraculous win there. Um, and I just feel like I know Dallas is still – inconsistent at times but i do think they are a cut above than the the teams that indiana has seen most recently so um if you know if we get word about boston um i'll probably de- actually i'll probably definitely bet dallas i'm i'm actually leaning toward them as it is here um and you know you mentioned it like these teams, they, they both still have something to play for. And uh, even though Indiana most likely isn't going to um, make the playoffs, like, as you said, they've been competitive. Dallas, I think, is just playing like they're kind of they're kind of are where they are, Dallas. But at the same time, like there's there are teams on their heels um, and they also want to beat up on on this team. So, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning Dallas here, I think. I like it. I like it. So. That's that game. Next game, uh, we got the Sun at the Liberty at 8 Eastern. And the Libs are favored by 7.5. This is uh, somewhat of a Sun revenge spot, if you will. I mean, they're on a back-to-back, so I don't know if I would use that logic too strongly. But um, we remember the last time these two teams played, it was in Connecticut. Probably should have been a Sun win. Liberty weren't exactly playing their best. Um, but they force overtime, um, and they end up taking a win there up in Connecticut. So, um, now they meet again and, um, you know, the, the Liberty, they are only two games back of the aces. So I know it's another somewhat long shot, uh, of them actually catching up to the aces and, and snagging the number one seed, but I feel like they're going to try as hard as they can to do it. Um, But this is a game that I'm not, I'm not sure about. Well, and there's another big questionable on the injury report for this game as well, which makes it a little tricky um, to, to decide, you know, where to land uh, right now. So Sabrina Ionescu for, for Liberty is questionable with a calf injury Um, that she's obviously a huge swing factor. Um, They have Maureen Johannes who can kind of slot into that uh, off, off ball guard role and is amazing, but there's like trickle down effects of that, right? Then you don't have Marine on the bench coming in and being, being able to score. And, and that's the Liberty bench has been, you know, one of their strong points um, in the second half of the season here. So it's another one where if, if Sabrina is ruled in, uh, I think I would be on the Liberty side of this. Um, you did mention the revenge spot, which I'm, I, you know, if, if there's anyone to bet in a revenge spot on Alyssa Thomas, I feel like she's like, she goes to sleep muttering, you know, the scores of their losses uh, in, in recent games or whatever. She's she's definitely that type of player. But yeah. they are on a back-to-back. Um, they played in Connecticut last night. Short Short travel, but still, you know, those yeah. back-to-backs aren't easy. Um, I had this number uh, around Liberty 10 and a half if Sabrina was healthy, and that's even before accounting for the the schedule spot. So I think I would lean towards them. Um, the Sun have been kind of quietly, you know, I think when we think of the league, we think of the Aces and Liberty at the top. Yeah. The Sun almost in a tier by themselves in third, and then, yeah. you know, the Wings and, and some of the other teams. The Sun have been more kind of like that Wings tier in the second half here. In the first half of the season, they were you know plus six and a half net rating. Second half, they've only been plus three and a half. They've still been a very solid team, but I think that that missing Brianna Jones, who you know it's been a while now, I think it's starting to finally wear on them a little bit. Alyssa Thomas, especially, she goes you know 38, 39, 40 minutes a game and carries the offense and might be the best defensive player. And there's no way it wouldn't wear her down a little right. bit. So I, I'm in the Liberty. Meanwhile, you know, we've talked about this. They have pretty much hit their, you know, the smoothest part of, of at least from the outside perspective, it looks like they're all things are clicking. They're looking really good as we head towards the postseason, which is part of the reason I think you and I both see some value in their in their futures market. But Sabrina is a huge factor for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to wait to see on this. If I can get um, that injury news and the line doesn't move too fast for me. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to be on the Liberty side here tonight. 
Yeah, I would definitely set set any alert that you can uh, regarding that that injury in particular because I I personally won't do anything until I know what's going on with Sav. Um, she's just that that kind of player. Um, and you know, you made a good point about the sun kind of wearing down now a little bit, um, especially against a team like the Liberty that has the size of, of Brianna Stewart and John Cole Jones. And this is kind of what you saw in that last meeting where, you know, Alyssa Thomas was guarding Stewie and she was doing a darn good job and Stewie was having trouble shooting the ball. But what happens is they keep, keep coming at you. And, you know, uh, late in the game, you, you can only hold a player like Stewie down for so long. And uh, with that size and, you know, AT is a great defender, but she's not, she's not the body of Brianna Jones, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I do think they were feeling a little bit of that fatigue toward the end. I want to mention um, Barkley center, West Indian night. Uh, <laughs> oh, awesome. And so this is John Quell Jones territory. She's from uh, the Bahamas. Uh, so I know she's excited about that. Well, I, I don't know if that really plays a, a factor per se into the game, but I'm sure JJ is going to want to um, put on a show. Um, but yeah, yeah maybe we will. She, honestly, she's a player who in the second half, I've been liking her, her props, especially the rebounds prop. You know, yeah. she's, she's been really strong since the all-star break. She leads the league in rebounds per game. Uh, maybe that's, you know, and, and rebounds are one that, you know, sometimes points you can, you can have a bad luck and, you know, a shot rolls out. Rebounds are kind of a little bit less lucky in the sense that if you are really motivated that night for whatever reason, West Indies night, you, you know, yeah. got family <laughs> time, that's one where you're going to be going hard. You're going to get those extra few rebounds. Um, I like that. I kind of like that angle. I might, I might be looking at her, uh, her rebounds uh, prop because that's a, a great one to tie to kind of those motivational effort spots. I always feel. And also, I would maybe even be more inclined um, to sort of bet on JJ if Sab is out, only because it's going to be so much more crucial for her to stay, JJ to stay on the floor, um, yeah. because we know that the bench would be limited um, at times, including uh, the game Monday night what, that you and I were both at uh, against the Aces. You know, John Quell has found herself in foul trouble, and it kind of squeezes the bench. Um, and, and makes things a little dicier for the Liberty than, um, than they want. And that's exactly what the Connecticut Sun wants. So um, I'm sure they're going to look to try to frustrate her um, at every opportunity. But yeah, I would say uh, t TVD on that one, but definitely <laughs> some, some good food for thought. And one more game on the slate. We got the Dream in Minnesota at 8 Eastern. Dream are favored by one and a half here. Um, and this is, uh, this is another one. So both of these teams are, they're tied in the standings, but Atlanta has beaten, um, the Lynx twice already. So they, they're ahead right now because they hold the tie break. Um, I, my initial thought on this was I was, I was kind of leaning Lynx here. Cause I'm just like, I don't know. I, I, I hate it on the dream in my, in our last pod and, and they ended up winning. I just like, don't trust them. I really just don't trust them. Not that I trust the links either, <laughs> but um, I'm just like, are they really going to get swept? Are they really going to lose to the dream three times this season? Uh, I don't know. So um, when I saw the line, I was actually leaning um, Minnesota money line because of uh, there's just a little more value on it and it with it only being a one and a half point spread. But now that number has moved a little bit um, and it's back into minus territory. So I'm, I'm not 100 percent on that at the moment. Yeah, this was one of those lines. uh I feel like early, if it had popped up early in the season, I would have gotten like those Saturday morning cartoon like auga eyes because like it, it it makes no sense to me honestly. I I see the the Lynx as a better team than the Dream right now, and it's a, in Minnesota, um, so I I would have this around Lynx minus three and a half. But I'll be honest, the the, the more the season goes along, this the more information the books have. This is one of those markets we've talked about where, yeah. especially early in the season, you can have a significant information edge. And so you do, when you see those lines that are out of whack, so it, like if an NFL spread came out and it was like four or five points off of what you had as your spread, something would smell weird, right? Yeah. The, because of the attention the books pay to that sport. But in the early season in the WNBA, if you see that, I think you trust yourself. Later season, I do get a little bit more hesitant. 
Now, I will say one thing that makes me feel um, a little bit better about this line, and I'm on the Minnesota side with you, is it did open Dream minus two and a half, and it already has been bet to minus one and a half. So I think that directionally, um, it appears to be that, you know, what I have this number at, links minus three and a half, is, is at least the right direction to be on. Now, I don't know how far that will go. Um, I'm going to probably be looking to bet this, this links number. I want to let this podcast get out there and, and hopefully make it actionable <laughs> for folks. So, um, I'll wait on that and I'll be, I'll put in the, in the app, uh, you know, in a couple hours here, but yeah, the, there's no Jess Shepard for the links. Um, but I don't think that's as big a factor as some of these other injuries we've talked about. Um, they played well without her this season. They actually have a slightly better record without her. She's a great player, but, um, I think maybe it opens up their offense a little bit more, um, and the, the dream, they actually, I'll, we'll play a little game. Uh, yeah. I'll put you on the spot. Can you guess the last road game, the dream one, just like the general timeline of it? Okay. Um, full disclosure, I was just looking at their ah. schedule like a minute ago, but I'm like, I'm literally like, I'm looking away from my computer. Okay. Okay. But, I mean, it's been a while. I mean, two weeks. Two months. Know. It has been ju- since July 9th since they last won a road game. Yeah. What? So, they have really struggled on the road. I, I, I yeah, I, I really don't get this number. So you looked, you looked at, uh, did, hop in, hop in. Oh no, before, before you, I was just going to say the only, before you said that I was thinking the links haven't been great at home, but, yeah. but now that you just told me that, I feel like that negates that anyway. So, yeah. So I, I, I'm, you mentioned the, the links money line. I, I like that as a look as well. Um, I would have the money line, you know, out more around one. 45, 150, uh, minus 145, minus 150. Um, so even if it is into that, you know, minus 105, minus 110 range, um, I think there's plenty of value to be had there. I just, this Lynx team is, be- the Dream Team has that ceiling that is that makes them so intriguing at times. You know, they, they've played the Aces tougher than almost any other team. They have a talented roster, but it just, they also go missing a lot of times. And I think that, you know, Cheryl Reeve is going to look at a team like that that's inconsistent and just know exactly, you know, which little, pieces to pick apart um and so i i i'm i'm gonna be looking at the links tonight for sure i'm with you there okay cool so <laughs> um this is yeah i i'm i'm feeling like i'm i'm onto something here or we're onto something here yeah but um yeah that's that's a wild stat about july 9th last road win i have that right right that's what you said yeah okay yeah. Um, I mean, I watched the uh, the Lynx against the Mystics the other day. Really good game. Um, Mystics ended up winning by 11, um, 83-72. Uh, but, like, the Lynx were, like, in it the whole time, and they were looking good. I don't know. And they lost to the Liberty, but we know the Liberty are kind of on a different yeah. lead length. Not going to hold that against you know, them. And the Lynx, like... They also won back-to-back games over the wings. And I, I just feel like they, they're they playing a little better than maybe their record has indicated of late. Um, and maybe it's, you know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just um, the, the coaching of Cheryl Reeve. I feel like I'm giving a little bit of an edge. And I want to almost say the maturity of the group, which is insane because two rookies are <laughs> highly <laughs> But I feel like she has those two, like Dorka Juhas and Diamond Miller, like playing with so much confidence and like playing really big, important roles and delivering uh, for the most part. So, yeah, um, I have to say I'm definitely leaning the Minnesota side here. Um, we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see if they uh, if <laughs> if the dream burn me again. But yeah, I'll be curious um, where this where this line ends because uh, I I do see it links by. Um... Like I have, yeah, like I said, I have links by about three and a half. So I'll be curious if it creeps out to there or if there's, you know, some market respect for the dream, even though you and I are maybe a little bit more skeptical. I know. <laughs> um, you look, look, it's just the inconsistency. It um, really is. It's just hard to trust. Um, all right. I think that's pretty much it for this Friday, September 1st. Um, yeah, I had a few l- just like long-term look ahead just real briefly if we have uh, a second here at the end of the we podcast. Do. We do. Um, one one bet that I have been loving um, of late and there's a, there's a game Sunday and then they have a, a couple more games after that. These Washington Mystics unders, I think, are officially back. Um, Shakira <laughs> Austin returned to the lineup. They now have that full 
core. Although, of course, somehow she 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 had to sit for part of the second half with injury. Ariel uh, Atkins also got hurt. They just can't fully stay healthy, but they mostly have their core back. Shakir Austin is back, and I think that's a huge impact on the the over under. They've hit five of six unders since she's returned. Um, they're playing the Sparks on Sunday. The Sparks have also been very much an under team of late. That's one where I'm going to, you know, you never want to blindly say you're going to take the under. They could set the number at 148 and a half, and then, you know, we have to zag and take it over. But from what I've seen the books um, be posting for the Mystics, they don't seem to have fully caught up on that. So keep an eye on that. Um, and then this this final week here is going to just be really fun. There's some big games. There's Dream versus Mystics. There's Lynx versus Sky. The yeah. big one, I'm really hoping the Sun play their starters on that final Sunday because that Sparks playoff spot is starting to look like it's just fading away. They lost at home to the Storm last night. Yeah. Really tough loss for their playoff hopes. They're now tied with the Sky and the Sky of the tiebreaker. So uh, I'll make my plea here, Connecticut, yeah. you know, don't let anyone disrespect you on that final game. You got to play those starters. Make sure the sport has real integrity uh, because us ticket holders for the Sparks playoffs really need uh, you to play your starters and beat the sky that final game. So. That's hysterical. Uh, you know, I don't think, I don't know. I don't get the sense that the sun are like that way. Like I just, who I, I guess I've, Maybe like, I'm you don't naive. think they'll sit the starters? Yeah. like I kind of feel the same way, right? Maybe yeah. I'm naive there, but I just feel like Alyssa Thomas would just would not. She like, couldn't. She, she couldn't. Yeah. She's not, she's not not playing. She's not playing limited minutes. Like, she is, she doesn't have any other gear. So. Exactly. All right. Um, we've, we've spoken into existence. It has to happen now. Exactly. Play your starters. Manifest. Respect the game. Manifest. So we have, we'll be back uh, Tuesday for a pod on September 5th. And then. Less than a week after that, it's it's playoffs, baby. Um, yeah, it is. So we're going to have a playoff preview on, on the 12th, 13th, start the playoffs. So you said it. I mean, this next week, week and change is – this is everything. This is uh, a lot of motivation, and, and you got to really pay attention to the standings, who's playing for what, who's chasing who. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a super fun time. Um, it's been a really fun summer – doing buckets um it's not over yet but probably our last pod for a bit because we're both doing some traveling coming up here um but i'm sure uh i'm sure we'll be talking to you again jim turvey thank you for uh thank you for joining us as always yeah thanks so much uh this final week should be awesome and then yeah it'll be fun for both of us to follow the playoffs from remote areas for a bit and then circle back maybe around uh, you know final time so yeah, make sure you follow Jim um, at Turvy Bets on the Action app to keep track of everything he ends up betting and stay on top of it because once he puts the bet in, you know, logs it, uh, things can change, things can move. So <laughs> to be on top of it, um, and uh, you know, if you haven't already, the the Action app is is such a great resource for that sort of thing. So be sure to download it, um, and if you rate and review this podcast. Uh, you also have a chance to win some action swag or a free subscription to Action Pro. I'm Maria Marino. Thanks again for listening. Let's get buckets.